be surprised on how much money she'll spend with you on just you giving her a good tip. All right? Look at her outfit, you know? She should be shopping here or there, all right? Look at her face, all right? Does she need help with skin, all right? Help your clients out and tell them the do's and don'ts about keeping good skin, all right? So get involved in all her services. If you look at her makeup, her makeup is too dark or too white looking, don't just let her just walk in and walk out like that because that still represents what? Your work. So tell her in a way that you can tell her about how to look a certain way. And you'd be surprised on how much she has to come up to you and get a lot of ideas from you. Um, number three, pause and refresh with class. Pause and refresh with class. What does that mean? Think before you um, almost, but how about refresh? When I say pause and refresh, try to have refreshments if you can for your clients. You know, clients come to you for a lot of different reasons, and you'd be surprised on why clients come to you. Even if you just give out grapes and wine, you know, a continent of breakfasts on Saturdays, you know, anything that can be different than what another stylist may do, because just say if everybody here did the same hair, all right? And this young lady right here did hair, but she serviced her clients different than what we all did. What are they gonna talk about? Her grapes and wine. Because everybody else doing the same thing. So pause and think, what kind of refreshments or different things that you can do to refresh your atmosphere? All right, whether it be jazz, music, anything different, you know, anything. Have somebody come in to do massages, any little thing that's different for as refreshing the atmosphere at your salon. Because again, it's not all about just doing hair all the time. Services is the most important part, all right? You go to a restaurant, the food could be good, but what happens if your floor is dirty? Mm. Or your table is dirty? So now the service is already bad, even though the food is good, but now you're already pissed. Mm. You see what it is? The food could be excellent, but the services have to change. Think about different ways of refreshing with class. Number four, banish the clutter and dirt and dust. Banish clutter, dirt, and dust. That means what? Your work area should be thick and span, should be clean. Your back bar area, all the bottles on the back bar should be what? Clean. Because every time your client sits down, you know what she does? She gonna, first, first of all, she gonna look inside the shampoo bowl. And see if she's seeing any relaxers in there, or cones with gook in it, or she gonna look back at the back bar and see what, first of all, what you're using. If the shampoo is dripping down and hanging down there with dirt, and goo. When you sit down at the style area, do you have hair from the last person? It's hair in the chair. You should look back at your work area. Is it clean? Is it straight? Or is it dirty? So you got to have everything clean. You can't have your cheeseburger wrappings and your orange juice from earlier and Taco Bell and pizza all just cluttered up on your station because clients look at every little thing that you do. Every little thing that you do, so banish all the dirt, clutter, and dust. How many of y'all clean the bottom of your chair at the end of the day? I never know. You gotta do it every day, y'all. Just like in beauty school. Just like in beauty school. I've been doing hair for 17 years now. 16 or 17 years. I have not missed one day with cleaning my chair. Every single day, you have to clean the bottom of your chair and make sure your area is thick and span straight every single time. And then once you do it for 30 days, it becomes a what? A habit. Does that make sense? So keep the areas clean, all right? Number five, <coughs> dress to impress, but not too much. Dress to impress, but not too much. That means I think that as a style, I think we all are like rock stars. You understand that, right? I think we're like rock stars, so we have to dress to that image. Now you can't. Now you can wear Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all that, but you can't be Louis hat, Louis. I mean, makeup, Louis shirt, Louis belt, Louis pants, Louis socks. Not like that. But still look good for your clients and look at you like how I like your look, and they come to you for what beauty tips and techniques. So look good, but at the same time, you don't want to what overdo it. So dress to impress, but not too much. 
Question. I, I just have to add that it's really funny because those have been in the industry 20 plus years. I still have a young client today. Uh, two weeks ago, this young client said, Let's just ask. They have a store in the mall called Court. You know, and um, you know, she was telling me about the clothes, and as soon as I walked up to Court, I went there yesterday. Uh, it said plus size. <laughs> but it was funny because she, you know, I mean, I'm doing them so big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> no, no, all your clients come in talking broke talk. Bro. I can't afford to get the relaxer and the trim today. Or can I pay for it next week? But if you start talking like rich life, they start talking rich life. Yeah. If you start dressing a certain way, your clients start dressing a certain way. So your clients reflect every single thing that you do. And especially your lady clients. I mean, your lady stylists. If you put color in your hair, they put color in their hair. You cut your hair, they cut their hair. You go natural, they go natural. They say, well, I'm not relaxing money to go to. No, you went natural. <laughs> so they went natural. So everything that you do, ladies, your clients copy everything that you do, from purses to how you wear your shoes, everything. All right? So kind of reflect on what kind of clientele do you want. And that's the kind of look that you actually have to put out there. And then you'll actually get that type of look. If you have a rock star appearance, normally you'll get rock star type clientele. If you have a very, very conservative clientele or how you dress, and your clientele is reflect every little thing that you do. All right, so look at how you want to dress and kind of figure out what is it that you're going to actually get out of what you're putting out. There. All right, um, number seven. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, six, six, six. Be there or be square. Be there or be square. What does that mean? Be on time. And be on time is late. If you have a 9 a.m. appointment, if you come in at 9, that's late. Coming at 8 45, that's still late to me. I say always be there at least 30, 45 minutes before. 30, 45 minutes before, so that way you can get prepared for your clients and you can know exactly what kind of service you're going to put on your client. And you're like, ooh, I can't do that. <laughs> but be there, be square. So that's like everybody here going to Papa Do's and you walk into Papa Do's and the cook walk in with you. You're saying, just sit right there, I'm going to get the stove ready. And you be looking like, what? <laughs> All right, so you want to be there before your clients get there, so that way you can get what? Prepared for what's going on. That makes sense? So at least 30, 45 minutes before. 15 minutes is late. Sorry. All right, and on time, walking in with them together, and they sitting outside waiting in the car, you laughing and giggling with them. Now, they're going to laugh and giggle with you, <laughs> but now eventually they're going to start looking for those styles. Yep, they yeah, find somebody that's and you're not going to know what happened. All right? So be there, be square. Number seven. This is not y'all here. We're just gonna still say it. Don't fake it until you make it. People that's faking it probably the ones that are not coming. A lot of times, stylists don't want other stylists to know that they don't know. Mm. So they don't go to classes. Mm. So they try to learn online. Mm. Online haircuts, online colors. Yeah, I don't do hands on, I do online haircuts. <laughs> yeah. So don't fake it until you make it. If you don't know anything about color, don't do it. Just have all your clients black until you learn. <laughs> if you can't cut hair, keep it all on. Nothing wrong with doing long hair. McDonald's make fries, not mashed potatoes. <laughs> until they learn how to do ribs, then they start learning how to do ribs. But first, you gotta learn it and then you do it. Don't fake it until you make it because once you mess somebody's hair up, what happens? That bad news. Bad news travel even faster now. All you gotta do is put it on Twitter, <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> See, back in the day, 15 years, yeah, it would travel, but now, man, like a click of a button. Mm -hmm. And like your whole clientele is gone now because you can't cut a coat. Or do we? You got one braid here, one braid here. Braids going up and down. And you wonder why the weed don't look smooth. Am I right? So don't fake it until you make it. All right, um, number eight, comfort zone comfort zone. Make sure you try to get out of your comfort zone. If you want to learn cutting or you want to do more makeup or whatever it is you want to do, 
Just go ahead and do it. Step outside the box and get outside of your comfort zone. A lot of times you say, well, you know what? All I want to do is short hair. All I want to do is long hair. But why? It's because you're trying to stay inside the box, stay inside your comfort zone. If you really want to do a certain thing, you got to get outside of your comfort zone. And just go out there and try. When I first started doing hair, I could not cut a lip. A lip. So all I would do is updo this for two, three years. Everybody, what the hell was like? It's long or 10 inches long. I'm going to put it up. Because I hate to cut. When I got tired of <coughs> updo, I said, you know what? I got to get outside my comfort zone. Let me go out here and start cutting. But then I did the other thing. I was faking it until I made it. Until somebody found out that I couldn't cut, and she called back up on the phone. Yeah, she tore my hair up. My hair cut is very, very ugly. It's uneven, it's X, Y, Z. I'm like, oh my goodness. I wanted to hear everybody doing this. I'm talking on the phone. Like, wow. So after that, I hung that phone up and started taking cutting classes. Every cent. Any kind of class I wanted to take, if I didn't have the money to go to a class, I called the styles up and who was doing the class. You need any help, can I come assist? Carry your bags, you can floor, share food, anything, until I got the money to start going to class. So anything you got to do to get better, you got to get better for what you're trying to do. But get out of your comfort zone. Who's in here kind of like shaking with color? Anybody shaking with color? Nobody? Okay, cool. You ain't got to raise your hand. We're going to have a test anyway, so it's going to show you. Anyway. <laughs> you ain't got to raise your hand. I tell you, don't be scared now. We all students today. I'm going to ask y'all again. Who in here is kind of un sure about okay. doing color all the time. Okay, cool. All right, we got a few more hands to go up. So that means that everybody on comfortable, raise your hands again. All right, so everybody else don't got hands up. That means you got 100 on the test coming up. That means you got to have 100 coming up on the test. All right? <laughs> I used to hate doing color too. I used to hate, but now, I mean, you can do relaxing and color on the same day if you want. But again, you have to know what the technique, all right? But now, for students, you just, Pass stay boy, and then you talk about that stuff later. All right. <laughs> Number nine, cutting costs. Cutting costs. Cutting as much fat as we can. Cutting as much fat as we can. Cutting the cost. What do I mean by this? Saving money. Watching how much money you spend on certain things. Do I need to buy another flat screen TV? All right. Should I buy? more products, or should I invest in another product, all right? Should I buy another car, or should I buy X, Y, Z? So what ways can you cut costs? Should I pull all the cords out of the wall before I leave to go home? Yes. Now why? Because you save money when all the cords are out of the wall. If they're still plugged up, even though you're not using it, but it's still plugged up, it still ticks slowly. By the time you pull the cord out, guess what happens? It stops. I know that, right? If not, you know it now. So you're going to learn today. Y'all right. got that right? So cutting costs. What can I do to cut costs in my salon? If I own a salon or whether I'm a booth runner or commission worker, what can I do to cut costs? Just think about different ways. Write down 10 different things on how you can actually cut costs. What can I do to make more money? Should I buy more videos? Go to more hands-on classes? Classes don't cost. Videos don't cost. Education pays, y'all know that, right? Education pays, it doesn't take any money from you at all. So you spend money to make money. That's an old business law right there. You spend money to make money, always. All right, number 10, priority check. And this is gonna be the last one right here. Number 10, priority check. All right. If I know I got Ten dry chairs, and all of them got black tape on them. <laughs> should I get my chairs fixed, or should I get the plumbing fixed, or should I get the bathroom fixed? You got to figure out the priority. Which one should you get done first? You got your chairs, you got your plumbing, and you got your bathroom. Which one should get fixed first? Plumbing, because the plumbing you got the what? You got the shampoo you have. And the plumbing still kind of goes to the bathroom, so you got plumbing first, and then what else? And then the bathroom, because bathroom, man, people will not come to you with a dirty bathroom. Y'all know that, right? Regardless of how good you do here, a dirty bathroom will make them be like, ooh. The bathroom, and then you can get the chairs fixed last. So think about it, should I get that fixed first? So look at the priority list. Just write down the priority checklist. What should I do first in my salon? If 
Don't own the salon. What should I do first as a style, as a priority check? Should I go to the Jay-Z, Kanye concert, or should I buy videos? Now the videos are gonna help me to go to concert. Why? Because the videos help you do what? To make money. So look at the priority check. What should I do first as a style or as a owner? What should I do first? And do a checklist. About 10 to 20 things and just check them off as you go out throughout the week. What should I do first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth? All right? And these are just a few things that we actually look at, you know, as business owners. And I say everybody's a business owner, whether you commission, blueprint, or you pan the overhead. So a lot of us know that overhead is a beast, isn't it? Sometimes in the back of your head, you were like, wow, I wish I had stayed that nice salon I was working on. <laughs> and all this other stuff along. Sometimes owning your own salon, we look at towels and, you know, washer towels and electricity and dealing with different attitudes and personality. You're like, wow, I did that on my own. Yeah. All right? So look at everything and do it as a priority change. <coughs> All right? Any questions before Kate actually comes up and starts doing her own model? Go ahead. I have a question that's kind of piggybacking from you. Okay. Um, how do you feel about, like, salon park stylists versus, like, working with, um, you know, in like a big salon mm -hmm. where you have like other people working with you or like commissions. Yes, for that. Yeah, whatever. Because I've been working by myself for like the past two years. I mean, I love it. Like, but then I kind of miss that. I feel like I miss it now because I've only been doing hair for three years. I feel like I was okay. really All right. <clears throat> I look at that as pros and cons. It's pros and cons of being a booper salon. Pros and cons of being a commission. All right. So even that has pros and cons too. Now, if you don't work in a um, 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 salon, park environment, by yourself, you got to be that person that has to go to classes like triple the time that somebody that works in a big group does. Because working in a group, and except we all work in the salon, y'all know we would be the baddest salon in Houston. You know why? Because we can piggyback off of everybody's ideas and look at ideas all day long. But when you're in your own area, by yourself, now you kind of like block yourself out from the world. And now that means you got to watch videos every single day. You got to go to classes double, triple the time. That's the only thing. It's good, but then it's bad sometimes. But again, it has pros and cons. But then, again, if you can work by yourself, you got to go to classes like triple the time. But being around somebody else working, if you see somebody doing a certain technique, and we all seen this before, oh man, I like that. Let me try that on my next client. Or if you see somebody and they're getting relaxed and they're burning, well, why is she burning? Oh, well, she forgot to base her. Well, I got to make sure that I do what? Base. You see what I'm saying? So you can see good and bad in being in salon atmosphere. So that's why I like working in bigger groups because you get ideas. How many of y'all ever watched a haircutting video and got an idea from it? Or a technique from it? You may not even do exactly what you see, but you get an idea or gives you a vision. So that's a good thing about working in environments with other stylists. But again, if you're not, and you don't want to work by yourself, you know, just gotta go to classes. You know, a lot. That's the only thing. And if, and if you do work in by yourself, you know, try to find some friends, network. And then access dollars can you come just watch what you have for a day or two, just to get ideas, all right? And we're all gonna make sure the day before we leave that we do network and pass our cards with everybody in the room as well. All right, okay, that answer your question? Yeah, it is. All right, any other questions? Questions, questions, questions. All right, now y'all, we're gonna make this an interactive class because we're gonna have a good time today. Y'all gonna get a lot of information, a lot of cutting techniques, tips, the whole nine. Who's coming up? Hey, Messiah. Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Thank you. I'll see y'all a little bit. <laughs> Charge the price. They're going to be there because you have to know your self-worth when you do anything. 
Education will bring that for you all the time. You do not educate yourself, you're not doing anything different than anybody else. Why should they pay you the big bucks? You always have to set yourself a standard away from everybody else. So, Rochelle's gonna go over her color real quick and then Messiah is gonna, uh, and how she got the color technique, and then Messiah is gonna go over her cut. Okay, um, what I did with this model, we went in with some um, color panels, and the reason why we stress color so much because colors really make your haircuts pop, okay? Haircutting is one thing, but when you when you collide that color with that cut, it pops. She's like a walking advertisement. She can go to the mall and she'll call me. I had five people stop just on the color and how healthy it still looks with that color. Mm. Most of your clients are scared of color because of what they've heard. Oh, it's going to break it out. Oh, it's going to dry up. Oh, it's going to do this. You have to have the confidence to educate them on how to take care of it. Part of it is being a regular, a regular client. So what we went in in the front, we took an S pattern from we took an S pattern shape from the top of her ear across to the other. If you just think of the S symbol like Superman, from here, made an S. And we did panels all the way across at the top of her, of the panel. And you can use, I mean, a lot of people ask me, do we use foil, do we use paper? It's really stylish preference, whatever's more comfortable for you. Um, we took the panel. If you can see the, the color combination, I went in with a copper at a level eight with a 40 volume developer here. And you go in with a vertical brush because you don't want that line of demarcation. Okay, when you take that brush in like you paint in the house, you're gonna get that look. We're gonna get a line here and a line here. That's not the look you want. You want it to blend, you want it to look natural. So I took the, the uh, brush at a vertical party. I applied the color first, but I went in, shaded it in, and in another bowl, I had lightener at 40 volume, an uh, orange-based lightener. Took it to the end. So I would start at the bottom and go up. I did like three panels all the way across in the edge pattern until I got to this side. Same thing. We let her process to lift it. Let her process, we shampooed it out with the psychedelic shampoo and the precipitation shampoo. Before we applied any conditioner, we went in with a, a temporary color. The reason why we did not put conditioner on first because conditioner does what to the cuticle? It seals it. So if it seals it, then it won't be open and allow me to place another color on. So I applied a temporary color, red temporary color, let it sit for like 10 minutes. I really didn't want it to get a red, I really wanted it for the shine and to make the, 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 the light pop. Okay, let that sit, then we went back in and shampooed it again with the, uh, with the hydrating precipitation and gave her a honey making dust conditioner. And we proceeded with a silk wrap. She's ready to go. You can also do this to make this color pop. You can also go around the exterior and apply a darker color like she has. She has uh, black around the X here. When you have a light color on top of a dark color, it really makes that light color pop. So they may have like a normal natural two or four kind of dull, they may think it's dull. You could also go in with a one in or a two in to make that color pop at the top. So that's what we did for her. When you comb it down, it just it blends in. Like you always want color to look natural. You want to look natural as if the sun did. That highlight, you want to, you want to look natural. That's her. And let me go over her color technique. The same S pattern, I kind of combed it in the design. If you can stand up. With the same S pattern technique, if you see across the front, we took the S. So on a shorter version of hair, you see that same technique will look totally different on a shorter head of hair. With the darker exterior, and on the interior, we have the highlighted color we use 2040 with our orange lightener, which gives the lightness and the depth throughout the hair. I went to send it through so you can see all the colors that I did to make a little kaleidoscope through her hair. When we pre-lighten the hair, the most important part about getting these different colors, when you're doing these different colors, sometimes we need an assistant to help them. So when the rinsing out process of it, because the colors are easy to bleed on one another. If you don't have somebody holding some parts of the hair out of place, it will bleed on one another. Like if you have a blonde with a red, it'll easily turn orange if you're not having somebody hold that out of the way. When we rinse them out, once you take the client from underneath the dryer with the, with the um, semi-permanents, you must, do not wet that hair down. You're gonna do like a, sh a shampoo cap. You're gonna apply the shampoo on the hair before you even wet it down. Because color removes what? Okay, so if you're rinsing the excess color off, it's staining the scalp more. And then if, you know, you have those people who say, oh my collar, my pillow, the color was just everywhere. Because you didn't properly balance that color before they left the salon. You just went through, you wet it down, and then you went through shampoo. But put the color on first before you even wet it down. 
and that would get the excess residue off the hair. So if you're having any issues like that, that's how you do it. So what we did was, it was my sister and I, first we did the outer perimeter because it's the darkest part. Because we know black, is if it interferes with anything, it's gonna darken the area. So you wanna get that off the way first. So once you do the shampoo on there and lather it up, rinse that area off, put some conditioner on there. Because the conditioner is gonna what? Seal it down, so it won't bleed onto the other section. Then you move on to your other darker parts. And then you rinse that off, put conditioner on there. So once you get through the whole hair pattern, then you can do one major shampoo and then you're good to go. That way your clothes won't bleed on one another. Because sometimes you know how you do a color and you're like, oh, I wanted it more vibrant. And you forgot the fact that the darker colors have what interfered with it. And if you shampoo it around, it's gonna change your whole color technique. That's why if you have a client with colors like this, you don't want to tell them to shampoo their hair at home. Because number one, if they're using the wrong shampoo, it's gonna strip it. Because I know y'all have seen it before. The color was real vibrant and it came back. You're like, what happened? They shampooed it with the wrong shampoo. Because again, if you are going to sell your client the proper products, think about if they have color in their hair, then give them a dry scalp, whatever it is, you want to always make sure you're retailing the proper products to the client. Because it will make all the difference in the world. Because then if you have to do it again, you know, she's not going to pay that money. You know, prices like this, it's not just for a color in a semi permanent. Techniques like this take time, so time is. Okay, so you're not just gonna say, oh, it's just gonna be all. Oh, it's just $30. The longer it takes to do something, what? The more you're gonna charge. And sometimes, even if you just take one little section, you can still charge a lot for it because I have to use my brain power. Think about how I'm gonna use it, how I'm gonna put the color in to blend with that cut. You know what I'm saying? So just because it's just, it might take you two or three minutes, doesn't mean you still shouldn't charge for it. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna go over to cut me while everybody checks that out. Um, real quick, before I get to his cut, I just wanted to give you an example of another color. If you can turn to the front. Um, my, my mom out here, he, she has a combination of blues and purple with her blue black. Now, this is complicated, as Kay was saying, because of the shampooing technique, because this mess all of this up. So, we put black around her exterior, but we have blue and purple in the front. So, we caught a Smurf, blue, what was it, blueberry pie yeah. this morning. As we it came out fresh for the winter, blueberry pie, winter mayhem. So, a lot of people are always asking, well, how do you get such, such true colors like that? How do you do? Well, what I do, what I what I like to explain is just like if you have a white sheet of paper and you take some crayons. If you color on white paper, you're going to get that authentic color of that crayon. If you have black construction paper and get that same crayon and color, what are you going to get? It's not going to be that. It's not going to be that true color because that black is your foundation. So what you have to do is pre lighten So what we did with her, we pre lighten and it came up to like an orange yellow. So that gave me a lot of room to play with. And her hair is real poor, so it took my color very well. And everybody's not a color candidate. Everybody that sits in your chair cannot get these vibrant colors. If they want these blondes and all this, they have a double chemical, you have to keep the integrity of the hair. So I have a client in the back. She loves her blonde. She loves her high lips and her platinum. But guess what? When we go in for a relaxer, we do a regular relaxer on the, on the exterior. But at the top, she's semi-natural. You know, she may get a texturizer up there maybe three or four times a year because of that color, we have to maintain the integrity. So when we lifted back to her, we lifted her up to like a yellow orange, and we come back with a dark violet, this is the color you end up with. So to get a more true feel of that, she's gonna walk around and you can see the different hues at the top. But after lunch, you see these paint brushes and these cups, we're gonna get real, real hands on after lunch. So we can play with these colors so y'all can see what happens when you apply color to uh, hair at different levels. So you can really, really, because we can tell you all day long, you know, blue eyes, without, blue pants, a lot orange, blah, blah, blah. But when you really, really see it and see their hair changing, you can really, really get a good understanding of how to play the color. Right, so we thought it's going to go. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some movement to get her silk wrap a little more clear. She wants to keep her wings. So I have the hair come down to natural fall. Now, this is kind of like a freehand cutting, kind of custom cut. A lot of times your clients come in and they want to just look or they, you know, they want to just freshen up their look. I like to come the hair down in natural fall. That lets me see where everything sits. And then I can go in and kind of design and, you know, using different converge techniques to create a concave bang or carry it over across the street, cut so that I can retain length here. You know, just going in and, and <coughs> making different cuts and, and let you know, see where I want that what where, where I want that hair to lay. Think about how she may part or what side she wants to wear her hair on, creating looks that she can wear on both sides. So I'm 
I'm just gonna go in and create movement. I'm gonna do some increased layers and slightly some disconnection so just so that this disconnected area in the interior will have a lot of movement for the exterior where I'm gonna leave them length. So we're not gonna take too much length off, but I'm gonna do increased layers. They're gonna go from shorter in the interior to longer at the exterior. And that's just gonna cause her silk crack to move even more. So, and I cut, I'll explain what I'm doing. Right now, she's coming down the natural ball, and I'm just gonna go in and create her exterior length. Can I do on my model? She wants to keep with a mohawk feel, but kind of heavy on the front end. Front interior of the head. Did y'all feel her hair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see? I mean, it's, when we have color on the hair, it tends to dry the hair out. Mm -hmm. Everybody is not a color candidate. Do we agree with that? Mm -hmm. If you have a client to come once a month, but she's a color candidate. Mm -hmm. No, she's not. Mm -hmm. You want to have to make sure that if people are getting color, they have to commit to the salon. At least every week or every other week. If they cannot commit to that, they're not good color candidates. But at the end of the day, if you put a color on, it's going to make your hair come out, they're going to be on the internet. She took my hair out. You know, it's never not their fault. It's always going to be the spouse's fault. So at a point, if, a, if you know a client is determined to get color and you feel that she's not a good color candidate, whether her hair is not the right texture, if you can't accept it, you have to say no. Because if you do it and the hair comes out, it's going to be your fault. You know, but I told you. But you're the professional. That's what you'll hear at the end of the day. So it's always going to be on the stylist. So what I'm doing right now, I separated the interior of her hair, and I'm going out using the traveling guidelines to her outer exterior. She's pretty tapered around the side, so I'm just kind of marrying the inner to the outside. I'm going to make it to where when I cut it, it's not going to be heavy. A lot of times when you see these mohawks, it's like heavy on the interior, and then it's just gone on the sides. And if they wear it down, it's not going to look good. You always want to make sure with that when you're wearing it, it doesn't have to just be in that one particular style that needs to look good. Does that make sense? So in order to do that, you have to make sure you're pulling the hair at the right angles to make sure you're getting that right cut. You know, if we're not here just to show you a particular haircut, but understanding why you're doing what you're doing. So you can create any cut that you want, you know? So with her, once we put the color on, we use our precipitation to uh, shampoo it out. And once we, you know, as our color and I put the conditioner on, we use our honey making nuts conditioner and then we place it on each panel of the hair. It's a moisturizing conditioner, but it doesn't impact like super moisture. So if you're looking for that slick feel, you're not gonna get that from that particular conditioner. From our mocha souffle, that's what you really will get. The mocha souffle is like a hair mask for the hair. It impacts a lot of moisture into the hair. So if you have a client with really porous hair, you wouldn't use the mocha souffle per se because it's gonna add more moisture to the hair. And you know, sometimes when you do somebody's hair and when it's dry, you're like, Oh Lord, it's starting to curl funny. You know what I'm saying? So all of that comes back to the shampoo bowl and the shampoos and the conditioners. So you have to understand if they have a lot of moisture and porosity in their hair, you don't want to add more moisture to the hair. You understand? You want to put the hair, give it enough treatment, but not enough to say, okay, I'm overdoing it. Does that make sense? So understanding the hair texture that you're dealing with, that's why we make different products for you to deal with the different textures. Does that make sense? So we did that and we went through after we uh, rinsed that out and we went with our So Sexy, which is our sculpting comb. We missed the, put that little like about three, three or four pumps on there. And then I molded it. When you're dealing with short hair, molding is very important. Whatever you tell us to do dry, wet is gonna do dry. So if you got parts in the hair, it's gonna stay there. Cause you know, with separating as I molded her, I didn't make one little head Line. Always do some kind of zigzag when you're trying to separate the two areas so it won't be a heavy line because it does not come out. You can spray it, you can curl it, it's still going to be there. So you always want to make sure you pay close attention to that. And the way her hair grows out on the outer exterior, you always want to make sure you mold that hair like that too. Because if I hold our hair in, it's never going to lay down for me. So you have to make sure when it's wet, it'll tell you which way it wants to go. If it doesn't lay down silky, then you're molding it wrong. When you're tying your neck wraps around, stretch them out first before you tie that around the neck. You understand? Because then if you do it on there, you always see when you take it out, you see like this little crinkly look. And once it's 
once it's dry, it's, it's what it is. It's dry and it's not it's a curl. <coughs> that makes sense? So you always want to check on that client, especially with short hair, before they finally get from under the dryer to see if around the outer exterior is crunchy. I always call it crunchy because it looks crunchy. You see like his tail, it will be crunchy, so you have to go back in there and re-wet it. Tell them to hold their neck down and hold it down. So when we did that, so what I did though, this is what I use once you got dry. Did y'all see, did y'all see how that shine pop? Once I put that on there? Mm -hmm. And it's not heavy on the hair, which is our power trip. It's a hair balm for the hair. It helps protect the hair from the heat of the curl lines as well. So it helps prepare the hair. It's not heavy, but it packs a punch of a shine. And this should last like you forever. When I retail this to my clients, they have this for the majority of the year because that's, that's, that's one thing I like about this product line, a little bit goes a long way. Yes. So I literally take the back of my nail and go around the edge and put a, not even a dime size in my palm. And that's enough for a haircut like that. So of course, stylists, as stylists, we're gonna use more because we're doing styles every day. But when you retail that to your client, that's the first thing I say. A little bit goes a long way, do not overuse it because then they'll come back and say they don't like it. Well, that's because they're using it improperly. Right. So it's our job to educate our clients on how to use these products. But I tell them, you're gonna have this until Christmas or whatever holiday is, you know, six months away. It's like, oh, really? Yes, go to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's one of the What are you doing over there, Okay, so I've created my outer perimeter length, and I'm going in, like I said, I'm going to create some increased layers in the interior. I'm doing a zigzag parting right at or above the occipital bone. I'm pulling that here. up at about 90 degrees or a little more, not directly straight out from the head. So it's over directed slightly, so it's a little more than 90 degrees. And I'm just going in, and a lot of times when you're going to cut that layer, you can take the hair, kind of see where you want it to sit or where you want it to lay, go in over directed to retain that length because, you know, the, the client is concerned about their length being taken away you know, you want to make sure that you're not going to take away too much. At the same time, a lot of times when they have split ends going on, you want to make sure that you're going into the interior because a lot of clients come in and they say, I just want to trim. And they literally want you to go around just the perimeter line and 